Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel Ray and today we're gonna do a whoop and chat and I just wanted to show you this. I don't, I don't, uh, anyway. Hi, welcome. This is a sped up version of me diamond painting yesterday and my lovely froggy voice on it this morning. <laughs> I hope that you're doing well and that you're having a great day so far and that you get a chance to sit down and relax with your favorite craft later this evening. Hello, Luna. Hi, baby girl. Luna's here with us today. I decided to try a new washi method for me, uh, which is to uh, follow the line on the canvas, on the plastic, and then pull the washi tape all the way across the plastic, following the line so that it lines up, and then cutting just above that line so that I have a perfectly straight line for the next row, which I don't have for the first row. And um, I also don't have to worry about the plastic uh, coming up while I'm diamond painting in that second row area where I have the tray right now. So... That was what I was showing you in the first few seconds. Um, this project that I'm working on is called Almond Blossoms by Jaded Gem Shop. And I have all the links to everything that I'm using down below in the description box of this video. If you need some help trying to find the description box, I have a how to help video as well. If you need to. <laughs> If you need some extra help, I understand that it can be confusing, but it's literally right under the video. Hopefully you'll see it. Um, and if you don't, I'll try to, um, to link a, a little I video here for you. So you can click on the video that pops up in the corner of the screen and get some help. Um, and I need to make sure that I write that down so I don't forget. How have you all been? Have you, what have you been working on? What have you been up to? Um, I just f got back from my brother-in-law's wedding. So that's where I have been focusing most of my energy the last couple of weeks is getting ready for the wedding, getting ready for my friends to come over and stay with us, getting my house ready. Quite frankly, the only time that I ever really like deep clean my house is when I know somebody's going to be staying in it. <laughs> so... I've been kind of all over the place for the past few weeks, and then, <coughs> excuse me, I think I still have a bit of a, a cold from the wedding. Yeah, but anyhow, um, it's been it's been a really nice few weeks after everything that happened. You know, the last time that I left you, I think we were just fresh from the funeral and everything and um I'm even going back to my videos now just to have a double check because I'm pretty sure yeah my internet doesn't work right want to work right now but but yeah I'm pretty sure the last time that I came out and talked about it I was talking about living authentically that was um the end of May the 24th of May so it's been at least two weeks since my last video and <clears throat> excuse me, um, I really appreciate all of the comments that I got on that video, actually, because so many of you were talking about your journey and how you have come to discover, like, being your most authentic self. Luna keeps opening the door. Sweetie, mommy is trying to record. <laughs> how about you lay down? I'll give you a treat. So, um, <clears throat> a lot of you are talking about, um, the difference between masking and being an introvert and all this stuff. It was very, it's very interesting conversation. If you haven't seen the video and you haven't read the comments, I highly recommend it because it is a very good read. It's very interesting to see all these different points of view. And I do really, really appreciate everybody uh, chiming in and let me know, letting me know that I'm not alone. That's, that's, it's such a blessing to have you all, uh, here to kind of listen to my random rambles and, um, 
things that I decide to get off my chest in these videos and then we get to share and have a conversation with each other and honestly if you had asked me five years ago if I thought that this would be possible I would have said absolutely not <laughs> you're crazy <laughs> so thank you I want to say a big, really big thank you to, before I start talking about weddings and all of that, I want to say a really, really big thank you to those of you who made it possible for me to hit 1,000 subscribers on my Floss Tube channel. You may or may not know that I made a second channel. Yes, I did. You know. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pop it up here. So thank you all so much. I've gone ahead and put it up in the I card there in the corner. Um, I decided at the new year that I would have a separate channel just for cross stitch. And I thought it was really interesting that when, when did I, when was it? Oh, for the last video, the one with uh, Beachcomber's Bounty. There were a few of you who said that you would like to please ignore Luna. She's just being extra and wanting my attention while I'm trying to talk to you all. She doesn't like it when I talk to uh, when I talk to anyone else but her. But <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Quinn said. Quinn and Letitia both said that they would love to see the Heaven and Earth Designs cross stitch version of the diamond painting. So I'm thinking about making a video there that I can kind of compare the two and share them both with you so you can see what the difference is before you go buy one or the other. Um, I will say that the the rendering for the Diamond Art Club version of this painting, it's a lot let's just call it easy mode. It's a lot easier to complete, but it means that the rendering is a little different. And as you know, um, all of the, all of the charting at Diamond Art Club is done by hand. So they've taken the image and then they've made it so that it's, you know, easier to diamond paint. And it makes sense. You know, the size that it's in makes sense too, even though it's freaking huge man oh my gosh it's like 90 something by 70 something it's it's so big it's right here 90 oh my god 98 by 70 it's so big um but if if you were to go any bigger than that well one where would you put it in the house and two um I know that some of us don't frame and hang our pieces but when they get that big you know anyway um so the, the problem is, where would you put it and how would you work on it? That's one of the reasons that I haven't done like one of those huge 200 by 200 pieces. I've seen them, uh, but they're literally the size of a wall. And um, I don't know if I have that much patience. I know that people stop me when I'm talking about crafting and they often say things like, you must have a lot of patience. And I say, no, I'm just very particular and I, I like to do this to, <laughs> to help my mental health, Luna. I like it to help my mental health. This is therapy through art. That's what it is. Do you want to argue that? No, I didn't think so. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so... Um, yes, I will, I will show you the difference between the renderings, um, and show you the difference in the cost. You'd be surprised, actually. Uh, the cross stitch is actually more expensive, uh, than the diamond painting. <clears throat> Excuse me. I know that it's, it's a, it's a pretty hefty price, but, um, to be honest with you, if you take... If I, div if I divide, like, how much I'm capable of in a week, let's, let, I hate doing math. I'm going to do lazy math, okay? I've got my tape measure here, and I've got my diamond painting in front of me. So this diamond painting is, like, 60, 61 centimeters long. I've done a section that's approximately, it's not even 10 it's like nine, nine by 60. 
in a week. And this total area of the painting is 75 by 60. So that means that I'm going to get at least seven weeks, six, seven weeks at this pace out of this painting. <clears throat> And I don't know if you all have, have done that kind of math on your painting and how quick you are. Some of you have a lot more time to diamond paint than others, right? Some people are really busy, young parents, or just have a really busy work life, and they come home and they do a section a week. You know what I mean? They do it in their free time. They do it as soon as they can, um, but they can't spend a long time at it. No shade. No, no, you know, no shade at all. Some people, um, for example, might have um, a disability that prevents them from doing much else. So they might throw themselves in headfirst and they are doing it all the time and they're finding it really helpful for the mental health. For me, I have uh, more of an emotional thing, you know, and I find it really soothing to do. And uh, kind of for a long time, it got me out of a really bad spot. So it was nice to do it all the time. But unfortunately for me, I can't do that anymore. So I'm doing about, what did I say? One, I'm doing about 10 centimeters by 60 a week. So that is going to be, yeah, seven weeks on the project. And then if I take the price of this kit, which I believe... Are we going to do this in real time? I think we're going to do this in real time. Why not? You can see my thought process then. If I go here, did I buy it? Yeah, it's on my other account. So you're just going to <laughs> bear with me for a few minutes. We'll do this together because I think that this is important to, um, to do, to do the math and to see like, you know, how much are you spending and, um, Hang on, I'm going to have to pause you because I can't, I can't read right, and so talk I've at the same time. I've gone back and period. looked it up. And I'm going to go ahead and pop in a card here so you can see the unboxing video this of this. This particular kit, uh, 12, what is it? Couldn't I have written this down first. Rachel, can you get your... I haven't finished my first cup of coffee, apparently. So anyway, the unboxing of this particular kit... The total cost of the kit, including the shipping, when I purchased this, was one hundred and twenty-six fifty-two. So we're going to round up to one twenty-seven dollars U.S. dollars, one hundred and twenty-seven divided by seven weeks. That's approximately eighteen eighteen dollars and fourteen cents a week. So eighteen bucks a week is not bad. Um, for the entertainment that it gives me, it might not be, you know, depending on how quick you are, you know, or how slow you're going, you'll get more enjoyment out of it maybe over time. Um, for example, some of my friends are single placers, so they're going to get more enjoyment, you know, for longer, if you want to look at it that way. But for me, I just look at it as, you know, an investment. Right, Luna? This particular piece has been um, a very important piece of art in my life as a young person, a young adult, and now as a fully fledged adult, I guess you could call me. Um, and so... Diamond painting this piece is not just for show, but it's, it's sentimental as well, and it will be framed. So that is just something to keep in mind when you are thinking about purchasing something and trying to maybe, maybe justify is the wrong word, but you're trying to budget out like, you know, how, how much, how, how much will I get? How much enjoyment will I get out of this piece? And can I, can I budget this into my entertain? Let's say if you're a budgeter or you're an envelopes person, um, if you have a weekly budget for entertainment, is, is it going to cover your diamond painting hobby? Maybe I don't think that way, 
personally. I understand why people do that, but Luna, you really want to be a part of this conversation, huh? Do you want to teach us how to budget? I need a reminder. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get into the wedding portion of this video. I had such an amazing time at the wedding. So the first, we're going to call the first night the rehearsal dinner night, right? Or rehearsal night. Um, we, I had been cleaning panic cleaning my house for about three days at this point. And those of you who are over on my Patreon, who watch my vlogs, will understand the level of disaster that my house was in. And because uh, I did show it on the vlog, you're more than welcome to come and join us over there. I enjoy making the vlogs. You get to see behind the scenes and everything. Um, Patreon is linked in the description box of this video if you'd like to check me out. Um, anyhow, oh my god. Um, so I'm panic cleaning my house because my two of my very good friends that live in Dublin, they now have three children together and they're both teachers and um, it's a crazy story. Okay, we're gonna like, you know, keep going back, 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 <laughs> tell the whole story. So I met these two friends of mine while we were living in South Korea teaching English. Okay, that was a long time ago now. That was a really long time ago now. That was like a decade ago. So, um, yes, if you didn't know, I did. I taught English as a second language in Korea for four years. And I met these incredible people um, while doing these, like, it's called Soul Hiking Group. I'm not sure. I'm sure that, I'm sure that they're still running. Uh, Warren from Soul Hiking Group, great guy. Um, if you're in Korea right now watching these videos, give me a little hello down in the comments. I would love to see it. Um, I miss it so much sometimes. I am like, I, I really do. Anyway, so I met my friends Ronan and Andrea over in Korea. We were hiking and doing all these outdoorsy things and um, James and I met there. That's a long story, but we started hanging out with more Irish people as we would like gather them like Pokemon or something. And, um, as we went along and then we were just hanging out together and we all kind of, I don't know, we, we coalesced, we all came together and we would go for parties at Ronan and Andrea's house. So we knew that once we came back to Ireland, like, you know, we knew they were going to get married and, you know, start a family and everything. We had no idea when. It took a little longer than I expected. But anyway, so they were living in Dublin, which is a long way away from here. I live in very rural Ireland. Um, it's about as far as you can get away from Dublin City. So <clears throat> anyway, turns out that when did they start dating? When did so my brother-in-law Rory and his now wife, Katie, uh, they met in like 2018, 2017 or 2018, right? Katie eventually got a job in Dublin teaching at a Gwale school, which is a, an Irish speaking, um, school. And they only speak Irish and everything, everything in the classroom, the subject matter, everything is Irish. It's very high profile. <laughs> um, cause once you get to a certain age here, like everybody learns Irish in school. Um, and yes, they call it Irish and not Gaelic but Gaelic is Irish, but we just call it Irish because it's, you know, practical. Um, so they, they started, Katie started teaching with Ronan 
like Ronan was at that school. Katie went to the, like was at that school and we didn't find out until later that we all know each other. <laughs> and it was like a small world incident. Anyway, I'm really bad at telling the stories. Just forgive me. <clears throat> so, excuse me, my throat again. Excuse so eventually me. that's how our friends from South Korea ended up coming to my brother-in-law's wedding. Small world. Um, but yeah, they, they came to stay with us and, you know, we were like, yeah, it's no problem. We would love to have you. But then there's me inside panicking going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I'm not ready. Um, I, I don't, I keep a clean house, but it's, it, I wouldn't say that it's like picture perfect. Okay. You're not, I don't expect a magazine when you walk into my home. Okay. There's tufts of Luna fur sometimes. I try to get them all. Unless I vacuum twice a day, every day during this season, I'm not getting them all. But anyway, um, I get the house clean. They arrive. We are super happy that they've made it. They're a little tired. They go, excuse me, they go and they go get some dinner. And we go to the church for rehearsal. Now, Katie and Rory got married in a Catholic church. <clears throat> Tell me why there was so much giggling. There was, there were so many jokes and it wasn't that it was a laughing matter. It was that everybody was so happy that they couldn't contain it. Right. They were so happy. Great match. They have a very similar energy vibe. They're, they're perfect for each other. So we were just over the moon for them. And I was there in the church and, you know, I was given a task. <laughs> they, they wanted to keep me involved because I was part of the family, but not part of the bridal party. So, um, I was the one carrying the memorial candle for my mother-in-law up the aisle. Um, and it was really, really sweet. I got to walk up with Katie's grandma. And I just thought that that was really, really, really sweet of them. So yes, I got, I got a little part in it and I also got a front row seat. <laughs> I got a front row seat to it, which is so much fun. Um, even though I had to like kind of move around the bridesmaids a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was a really gorgeous rehearsal and we dipped out so that we can meet up with Andrew and Ronan and have a pint or two and catch up and see how everything was going. Because like I said, they have three kids and they're under three years old and it's a lot of work, I'm sure. And, um, we were having such a great time talking and laughing and reminiscing and catching up on all the things. And we came back home and Ronan and James were just talking and, you know, still catching up and still having a wonderful, a wonderful time together. And eventually I had to be like, lads, I'm really sorry to have to do this to you, but like, it's two in the morning and we have a wedding to go to tomorrow. <laughs> so we woke up the next day and first thing first, coffee, you know, food, whatever. I had coffee. I couldn't stomach food. I'm, I'm not a, are you, are you a breakfast person? I'm not like a wake up and eat breakfast person. Then, um, Andrea and I went and got our hair done. Uh, I'm rushing around trying to get last minute things like lip liner and, um, I won't even, I won't even go into the horrors of the other things that I got that, ugh, just don't, don't ask. Um, if you're, if you're on Patreon or on Twitch, you already know, but, uh, anyway, running around like crazy. I got myself a sandwich. It's nice. Um, and came home and started rushing to put on makeup and 
the dress and the clothes and pack my overnight bag and like me going, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going, but just go with it. Um, me trying not to be weird around my friends cause they might not know me. Like, you know, when I get under pressure, I just get really quiet and I'm like zooming around the place, talking to myself, <laughs> like, do I have this? Do I have that? Oh my God. Oh my God. Um, the anxiety is high. <laughs> anyway, I got almost all of it packed. Uh, some of it I forgot, which, you know, that happens. But, uh, we got to the church and, uh, jump out of the car, run over there. I have like 10 minutes before, you know, the time. And suddenly my eyes start watering like crazy. I had put on false lashes and I don't wear them often. I only wear them for weddings, you know, for pictures. And, um, I guess my, the combination of my allergies and the wind said not today. So I ran over to my friend who, Carrie, who's an amazing makeup artist. And I was like, I need your help. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I can't stop crying. My ear, my ears, my eyes won't stop watering. I need help. And she was like, you just need to take them off. Cause if you don't, they'll get even worse. Um, and don't worry. I can't see any mistakes in the makeup. You just need to take them off because you're going to keep crying now. And I didn't, I thought it was going to stop. It didn't stop. So all throughout the ceremony and everything, I was a little emotional. I'm not going to lie. I was a little emotional, but I probably wasn't as emotional as everybody else in the church thought I was. And because I was at the front, <laughs> everyone thought that I was having a freaking breakdown or something. Anyway, you can hear, I have, I have hay fever pretty bad. And this year it's been, it's been kind of bad actually. Um, even just sitting in my house. So, uh, anyway, anyway, the ceremony was beautiful. It was gorgeous and it wasn't super serious, you know, like the rehearsal dinner kind of set the, there the rehearsal the day before I keep saying rehearsal dinner cause it's in our culture. But anyway, in the rehearsal, everything went really well and there was lots of giggling, like I said. So, you know, the, the mood was light and the jokes were heavy <laughs> and the idea was to keep everyone's spirits up because of all of the very sad passings that have happened, you know, um, Katie's father's mother passed away just a few days after my mother-in-law. So, you know, there were, there were lots of emotions. People who we thought would be there weren't there, you know, that sort of thing. So, um, we kept it light and it was wonderful. Afterwards, there was, it was incredible. They had an ice cream truck come and serve soft serve to everyone. That was really special. And it was like little cups of, you know, different flavors you could get like vanilla, chocolate, um, raspberry, strawberry, whatever you want, lime. They had all kinds of cool flavors, <clears throat> excuse me. And, um, each cup had a little sticker on it that said Katie and Rory and the date. I thought that was such a sweet thing considering it's so hot outside that the, the weather, the weather has been so incredible lately, you know, um, the sun came out and everything for us. So fantastic. Had some ice cream while we were waiting for everyone to shake their hands and say, congratulations. Um, then we took some pictures and then I, like my friends all went to the pub because they had organized a bus to go from the pub to the, um, from our local pub in the town to the ferry, um, where the ferry goes across to the island where they were having the reception and in the hotel where James and I got married. So it was really convenient for everyone. You know what I mean? So we, they all left and I'm standing around looking around going, okay, I know, I know 
<laughs> that I won't be left behind, but I don't know where I'm going. Um, Katie's mom was like, you're staying with us. You're staying with me. Don't move. Stay with me. And I was going, okay. At this point, Rory, Katie, the bridesmaids and the groomsmen have all left to take pictures. And you know, they're going to be gone for like an hour, an hour and a half. And I was like, I really just want to go with my friends. You know what I mean? Like, this is my thought process at that moment. I was like, oh, come on. I just want to go, you know, hang out with my friends for a little bit. No, 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 no. They had plans for me. So uh, (laughs) I got in the car with Katie's parents and they were like, we've organized a boat. I was like, a boat? We're going on a boat? After a lot of waiting, after a lot of waiting at the boat uh, for the the party to come back from taking pictures, uh, we welcomed them onto a catamaran, or you might know it as a pontoon boat, and they had champagne and like fruit and cheese and meats and things, nuts, whatever, big old platter, um, lots of champagne. There was some wine and everything else. And the idea was that the photographer and videographer would get into other boats. There was a drone and everything. And they were just like really into like getting the, getting it filmed and having a great time. Um, and they got some really amazing footage of us, you know, on the water toasting to each other and just being cutesy and whatever. And, uh, it was great. It was fantastic until the water started to get in the boat. (laughs) Uh, the front, you know, the front of the boat was like, um, where it would, it would go down to a ramp. That's the word. It was a ramp in the front. So there was a, a little gap there. The water started coming in the front. So we had to move, Katie's dress <laughs> and pull it up onto the chair. Hilarious. But, um, but yeah, we were trying to avoid the water or whatever. And, uh, then we, we went for a spin and we went really fast and got to the Island in record time. But then I heard they were, they were we were going to land. And then we were like, Oh, the videographer, you know, is really far behind. They're in a much slower boat. Uh, we, we should wait for them. Maybe, maybe we'll let the groomsmen and the bridesmaids and myself off and let Katie and Rory have the boat to themselves for a little while. But I heard with my little ears, a saxophone player. And I knew, I knew because at our wedding, when we got close to the ramp, he started playing. And well, I knew at our wedding, when we got close on the ferry, bagpipes started. <laughs> and I just knew that they had something planned like that. Do you know? They they must have had something planned like that. So I was like, no, 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 no. Nobody's getting off this boat. Turn the boat around, go back and see, wait for the videographers to land. And then we will, um, and then we will land. Because I know that Katie's parents probably have a really special surprise for them when they land on the island. So we went back at sea. We went back out and we started racing the other boats and the ferry. <laughs> that was so fun. That was so fun. Um, racing the ferry and the ferry was honking at us and like uh, people on the boat in, in the wedding, they were attending the wedding and they were hooting and hollering and getting pictures of us and everything else. It was it was great fun. Eventually, we did land, and I was right. Uh, they 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 did play a song, and I saw a hilarious photo that um, the best man accidentally stepped on Katie's veil, and <laughs> as they were going up the slip, <laughs> so her head is like thrown thrown backward. If I had that picture, I would share it with you, but. It's, it looks like a comic. It's, it's so funny. Anyway, smooth sailing from there. We got up to the saxophone player doing all the tunes and everything. Welcomed with Prosecco and, you know, all that kind of stuff. It was lovely. And then we started, as soon as we were, you know, nice and settled, everyone had a chance to go to the bathroom. Um, we started the speeches. And, um, 
Oh, and I managed to check in and get footage of the hotel room that we stayed in um, for the vlog. Again, Patreon. Um, so we, we we stood around and we uh, listened to the speeches. Someone was kind enough to bring me um, some water. I was really reliant on other people <laughs> that weekend. I don't know what it was, but I was just like... I'm, I'm being pulled in many directions at once and my needs aren't being met and people were very, very kind and helping me. So thank you. If you're one of those people, thank you very much because yeah, it was, it was a little, what would you call it? High octane? Like it was just really fast and you know, there was no time to think. It was just go. Anyway, so the speeches were amazing. Um, James had a speech which was super emotional. And he was talking about love and, you know, how we're all gathered together for love. And, you know, it was really, really sweet. And my eyes are tearing up just thinking about it. And, um, he was, you know, uh, remarking on how if it wasn't for the people before us, we wouldn't be here. And thanks to them and thanks to their wisdom and, them helping grow us as people, we've managed to find love ourselves. And, you know, it's all this big cycle and, you know, it was lovely. Then we had the best man speech, which was, it was fantastic. Uh, and also a childhood friend of Rory's was one of the groomsmen and he made everyone laugh and it was, it was wonderful. It was amazing. I really, really enjoyed that. Um, so we had lots of laughter, lots of tears for the speeches, and then they ushered us inside for dinner. And there were 275 people sitting down for dinner. I don't know how they did it, but they did such a good job organizing all the food and the drinks and everything. Fair play to the Royal fair play. Um, for dinner, there was a choice between beef and fish. Uh, it was either a, like a, what did they have? Like, it was basically like, I don't think it was roast beef. It was like a, f like a f feather of beef or a filet of beef or something like that. It was, it was nice. It was fancy with mashed potatoes and gravy and vegetables. Or you could have the fish and the fish was hake, pan fried hake with a, cr like a crust on top with a cream sauce that had like dill and herbs and stuff in it. I went ahead and got the fish because I knew I was wearing spandex at that time. No, no, I went up upstairs and I took it off. <laughs> I was like, no, there's no more pictures. I'm taking this off. I took off, took off the, the really, uh, the really tight stuff went downstairs to eat. Uh, no. So I had the fish anyway, and it was delicious. Uh, we had desserts then. All I wanted at, after dinner was a cup of tea. It took forever to get a cup of tea. I will be honest there. I think it was confusion because we were at the top table, but nobody else was. And they were trying to get rid of the table because it turned into a dance floor. That area right there was the main dance floor. So they really wanted to clear our table first. And, um, I was just like, listen, I just, I really need a cup of tea. Um, I've had nothing but Prosecco <laughs> for a few hours and I just need, I need a cup of tea now and water. I was drinking water as well, but anyway, um, yeah, we, they cleared that table so fast and I think we, we had gone outside to kind of mingle and talk to people. And one of the things about that night was that there were so many people there. Literally, I would, I would lose James and, um, we would end up being in like a circuit, you know, I would go out one door, I'd get stuck in a conversation with somebody that I hadn't seen in years. And then I move to go back inside. I started going into a second door and that was, that was the mistake. I shouldn't have done that. I was going in like a loop. I should not have done that because then I met the relatives then I met the, <laughs> do you know? And so I was like trying to get back 
I tried to find my husband to go get a dance or something, which I think we only managed one dance together. Uh, and then, and then, you know, this, this separation kept happening, but it was fine. It was fine. Like, I don't need to be attached or anything. It was just, it was just that we were trying to find him. Right. Because, okay, let me start with the dances. So I have a sip of coffee as well. The first dance, they, they gathered everybody together. You know, they did the mic checks and stuff. And then they're like, okay, everybody gather to the center because we're going to have Katie and Rory do their first dance together. It's a married couple. And then out pops a Tina Turner lookalike. <laughs> and she started singing Simply the Best. Incredible. Incredible. Um, the energy there was so good. You know, all of us start dancing and bopping away. And uh, it turns out that it was a lady that works just, you know, a town down from us. A very good entertainer, incredible singer. And it really set the mood for the rest of the night. So from then on, there was no stopping people. Like we were just like dancing. I even had friends who at that moment decided that it was a good idea to just go upstairs and change into regular clothes because they knew that they were going to be dancing all night long. And they were. I think that the band didn't stop. They stopped for a brief moment sometime around, I want to say, maybe midnight. There was like 30 minutes of no music. And then they went from being the band to being the DJ. It was awesome. Same, same people, but they went from being like the stand up band with the guitars and, you know, the drums and whatever to being an actual DJ set, the lights, everything. I mean, like it was awesome. So, um, yeah, just incredible music. There was, um, a candy bar like we had, except they didn't run out of candy. They had so much candy. And then, um, there was a photo booth as well. So, uh, they had a professional photo booth where the guy would, um, you know, you would snap your three pictures and then, or however many it was, I don't actually know because I didn't get a chance to go in there, unfortunately, but um, they would snap the picture and then they would put a copy of it into an album for Katie and Rory. And then you got a copy and whoever was in your party got a copy, right? That was fun. That was really cool. And that's why we were trying to find each other and we kept missing each other. But anyway, really, really great time lots of chats. I got to talk to so many people that I haven't talked to in ages. I got to talk to lots of family as well. Not as much as I wish I had been able to. The music was really loud as well. So it was hard to have a conversation, but we did have a really, really good time. And yeah. So as you can imagine, the night went on and on and on and it did not end. We were up until light, daylight. It was about 6 a.m. when we went to bed. There was a sing song. There were lots of musicians there and it was wonderful. (laughs) And the next day we got up, had breakfast and moved back to the mainland. We got back to town around noon or one o'clock and then came here to the house, rested a little bit, because day two was about to begin. And if there's something that you need to know, oh, this isn't, it wasn't day two, really, it was day three for us. Irish weddings are not just one day. They are multiple days. Luna, are you going to chime in again? Sure, you were on vacation. You were, you were hanging out with Cosmo, Freya, Puddin'. You were having a great time. <clears throat> yeah, you had a you had a wonderful vacation. She was staying with a friend of mine. So the next day was it was planned for us to have a barbecue at our local pub. And um fantastic. The guy, the owner of the pub, 
uh, Mike was actually at the wedding the night before. <laughs> so we, so we had organized, or they had organized a lovely dinner uh, of burgers and, you know, uh, sausages and stuff. And um, we, <clears throat> we got there and I was fine. I was fine until about an hour in. And then I was like, I could really go lay on the couch right now. But then music started and, you know, people got dancing again. I did not. <laughs> I was too sore and uh, emotional for that sort of thing. So, but we did have a good time. And there was a big old kind of almost club style uh, gathering after the pub as well, which we took that moment to go home and get some sleep. <laughs> but it was cool. It was really nice to to watch it all unfold and um, everybody enjoy themselves. You know what I mean? So the what was it the next day? Yeah, the next day after that was Sunday. <laughs> and um, we all took a rest day. We all, we all just kind of rested. Uh, our friend Ronan had to go back that day. Uh, Andrea had to go back the day after the wedding to get back to the kids. Um, but Ronan went up on Sunday with his coworkers and we stayed on the couch all day. And then Monday we got invited to go out to lunch and then we got invited to go out to dinner. So it was like another, <laughs> just another amazing day. Um, carrying on from the wedding. And I have to tell you that I think that I probably won't be going out for another month or two. <laughs> I've had my fill, but honestly, yeah, great time. I highly recommend if you ever get invited to an Irish wedding to definitely go because as an American, a, you know, born American, it, it's a totally different level and, uh, yeah, great times. But <clears throat> overall, I think that we're gonna, the next couple of days, weeks, it looks like we are going to be at a friend's wedding here in just another Some few days. Some friends of ours are getting married on the solstice, which is the 21st. So we have six days until then. It's going to be incredible. Um, a little bit, a little less hectic, <laughs> I think. Uh, a little a little less crazy, but um, still just as fun. We are excited to go, uh, but it won't be like a five-day affair. Um, and then, you know, that's when the solstice is when you get the longest day of the year and we'll all be in our, you know, the summer highs, just enjoying. Uh, it's technically like the first day of summer, but for us, summer has been going on for about a month now weather wise. So we're just going to enjoy it to the fullest. Um, my plans are to try to get out there and go swimming. Um, I have a wetsuit and you know, the weather's been so nice lately, although the last few days it's been overcast, but we kind of need it. I know I thought I'd never say that, but the summer sun, like the sun here is, a, it's just different. People keep talking about it. I'll let other people explain it because I'm not that sciencey, but it feels hotter here in lower temperatures. And I think it all just has to do with the angle of the sun, how close we are to the sun in comparison. Um, <clears throat> the rays are stronger. I have sunburn from the wedding and I put on SPF. So, um, but yeah, we're just going to enjoy ourselves. I wanted to plan to have a kind of a, like a barbecue sleepover kind of party with some friends. A sleepover is not the right word. Okay. Adults don't do sleepovers. We do like parties, but I'm going to invite my friends to go camping in my backyard, <laughs> basically. Um, cause we have a fire pit, you know, we have this lovely backyard, which we are going to have to say goodbye to later this year. And, you know, 
a part of me is a little bit sad about it. You know, I've, I've lived here since 2015 and I've loved, I've loved being here and, um, yeah, I, I'll be a little bit sad to see it go, but <clears throat> onwards and upwards, you know, uh, next, this coming week, we will be, um, on Twitch, just like normal on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I start at 1 p.m. or there or thereabouts, uh, Irish time, which is about 9 a.m. Eastern time. So it's quite early in the morning for those of you in the States. And it's a little bit later for those of you who are in Australia. I understand. I'm really sorry about that, but I had to pick a time and early afternoon is the best time for me. I am at my best. Trust me. Um, I, toyed around with the idea of going live late at night. We shall see if that happens later on. Uh, but next week I will be on in, um, on my normal time over on Twitch. If you'd like to join me, twitch.tv slash Rachel Ray craft. And, uh, over there following is free. So feel free to follow me over there and, uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be nice hanging out with you. Excuse me. I was about to cough again. <clears throat> Um, I also have plans coming up soon to Zoom with those of you in my Zoom tier on Patreon and to do a live stream with those of you in the live stream tier. I am very excited for those dates as well. I will give you more information over on Patreon. Uh, what else? I have the D stash coming up, so make sure that you are checking out my website, rachelraycraft.com. I will have a lot of diamond paintings going up there soon. Um, some of the proceeds of that is actually going to go to Child's Play, which is an organization that helps kids in hospitals to uh, be equipped with gaming equipment so that they could take their mind off of all the stuff that they're going through. And I will be making a public announcement when that tea stash is live. So just uh, keep your eyes peeled on that. If you haven't, followed me on Facebook and Instagram yet, I I would invite you to do so over on Facebook. I am Rachel Ray FB. I am no longer Rachel Ray Craft. That has um, unfortunately gone to the wayside. Rachel Ray FB. And on Instagram, I am Rachel Ray Official. Um, Thank you all so much for watching this video and hanging out with me and listening to all the wedding shenanigans. I hope that you all have a wonderful day, a wonderful week ahead, and I will see you all soon in my next video. Take care, everyone. Bye!